Uh -huh. You ran against Maxine Waters. She's been in the news a lot lately. What the heck is going on? Well, um, in a sense, nothing new because, I mean, Maxine has always been pretty good at, uh, at stoking, stoking the fire, kicking the hornet's nest a little bit. And, um, I mean, that's, 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 uh, setting the hornet's nest on fire. That's right. And that's what, uh, that's what she's, that's what she's doing now. I mean, there's a lot of anger, uh, built up towards President Trump and the Republicans and so forth. And, you know, I think that Maxine's political approach has always been to sort of amplify the emotion that people are, are feeling, that some people are feeling in her district. She's very good at that. And, you know, the, whether or not that's a good thing for our society, of course, is a very different question. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something that she's done and she's made a practice of for a while. And this is just a very conspicuous example of it. Uh -huh. Does it seem mainstream now, the, uh, this the notion of violence and hostility towards uh, Trump supporters or Republicans? I don't think it's mainstream as of this moment. And of course, I'm hoping that it doesn't become mainstream, that violence is a way of achieving political ends or even the suggestion of or hint of violence or harassment or just 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 obscene social aggression. You know, I don't want that to become something that's commonplace. And we have seen the Democratic leadership uh, condemn Maxine Waters' actions, even if they haven't mentioned her by name so much. Um, no, I think people recognize that this is a dangerous, uh, dangerous precedent to set. Now, having said that, it's also clear that if you look at some things that are happening in in, in college campuses and different parts of the country and different anecdotal incidents uh, spread out across the states, you do have people caught in the midst of some really ugly uh, polarization. And, you know, the potential for ugly violence, um, I mean, it could get worse over time. It could get worse. And so that's why we need to uh, summon the better angels of our nature and I think, you know, find a way to understand each other again. But of course, I'm talking my book here, so, you know. Why is it so hard for Republicans to put up a viable candidate to challenge Maxine Waters, who is so widely reviled. Well, Maxine Waters has incurred a lot of wrath and a lot of anger uh, nationally. The truth is, is that Maxine does have a loyal following in her district. Now, having said that, there are a lot of people in her district, including many Democrats, who are absolutely unsatisfied with uh, Maxine Waters and her performance. But Maxine, uh, you know, I mean, she's a she's a canny she's a canny figure, and she sits at the head of a fairly formidable political operation that uh, has its hands on you know on a lot of levers of power and influence in the community. And you know, she's hardly unique in that. I mean, that's simply the way politics operates frequently, certainly in big urban centers. Uh, and so Maxine Waters is a person who's, as I know, I mean, she's she's difficult to challenge, and you'll never be able, perhaps, to mount a sufficient challenge to her unless, on the one hand, you have the resources to do it, but on the other hand, you're a candidate who understands the district and who's able to relate to the people in the community in such a way so as to get them to genuinely listen uh, listen to what it is you're offering. And uh, the Republican Party in California is limited in its resources, and frankly, they you know they don't choose to invest funds in races they consider to be long shots. So. It's up, for, up, to the, up to the people to present an alternative, if that's what they want. How likely do you see that something emerging, or is she so deeply uh, ingrained? Well, um, Maxine is about as entrenched as, as they get. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, this is an issue that goes beyond Maxine Waters, of course. But, I mean, we've got people in the House of Representatives and politicians across America who are able to build up a political apparatus that allows them to remain in power regardless of whether or not they're meeting the fundamental needs of their constituents. Um, and so, you know, Maxine, I think, is a pretty conspicuous example of that. And she's worked hard to be where she is. And I'm sure that she probably doesn't plan on, uh, on leaving that office. Uh, she's also in line to become the chairwoman of the, uh, of the House Finance Committee, which is a very powerful position. So I think that she'll probably want to keep going until she can get to that spot, assuming that she hasn't taken herself out of the running for it with her recent actions. But, you know, that's just uh, that just remains to be seen.